Hey, Noptop here, and I got another screen capture for you. I'm in Final Cut Pro X right now. I like to change it up. See, I try all the platforms. Actually, I just, I'm jumping in between Adobe and Final Cut. I've been struggling for a long time to just stick with one. I renewed my subscription to Adobe. I'll have to talk about that in another video, but uh, I have that still, but I'm still using Final Cut. I really like the way it works. I love the just... A lot of features but without getting into all that I wanted to show you a couple effects I did in my latest episode here with this uh, cable cam video and these are just some fun things this is an animation and if you notice when you watch this animation it isn't just animated as far as moving but the lines themselves are moving and I did a video showing how to do this but I'm gonna show you how I did it on my computer here and this is the same technique as the jiggly text which I'm literally make I'm redrawing this a couple of times and that's why and how that's moving. Now you could put a video effect on it, kind of like a wiggle effect and it would just kind of wave around, but it's not going to look this good. I mean, look at that. That's cool. The way I did that was just in Photoshop and you can see here on my timeline I have this little compound clip. Let's double click on it and we're going to jump into it. And this is a, a Photoshop file that I imported into Final Cut. And you can see what it imports, it brings in my layers. But we're not quite there yet. This is just the compound clip for this move that I did. Let's click again for another compound clip. I went way in there. And what I did was, let me zoom in here. We get real zoomed in here. Each one of these clips are one, I guess, one or two. I guess I have it set up for two frames, it looks like. The duration I think that's what that is three seconds or three frames so every three frames is a new animation you can see here I have rig one two three one two three and I just have it repeat and the way I set that up was I imported all those you can highlight them like this you hit command D wrong <laughs> let's do it control D that's it and there it is okay it looks like it's two I have two which is odd I guess that's every two, is it two seconds? Is that, I don't know how that works. I can't do the math, but basically I have it set to two. So that that's the overall way of getting all of them conformed to the same duration. I'm not exactly if that's two seconds, if that's two frames, I'll let you figure that out. You can tell me in the comments below. But once that's done, now we have that compound clip or a timeline of just this. And then I make that into this and because I have two separate things here you can see I have this the actual camera mount and then I have the line which is a separate drawing this one I didn't get as intense with it's just two lines but you can see and right there is the animation so I started doing this screen capture without knowing exactly how in-depth I wanted to go about with some of these things um, if you're looking at this and this is very confusing, this might not be the tutorial for you because I don't know if I want to go into the basic level. But this is stuff that could probably be done in motion or if you use Premiere or Adobe, you could use After Effects for sure. I am like a big proponent of just staying in the same program. I'm just doing very quick, what I would consider quick effects, quick effects that really I just don't like to have to open another program if I don't want to just for something this simple. But there would be other opportunities for like adding motion blur, which would be really nice. That would be stuff that motion would provide if I was using it or in After Effects until these pro web editing programs get motion blur incorporated. But if we go in here, I'm going to see if I can right click on this. Let me let me double click. What I'll do is I'm going to go go way deep in here again. We're going to go inception on this and I'm going to reveal in browser. Bring that up. It's going to be off camera. I think it's going to bring. Oh, no, it's right here. OK, cool. Reveal in Finder. Let's see if that shows it pops up. Let's open this in Photoshop. And there it is. So this is kind of helpful to see. Uh, these are my, let me get the blue background. I originally tried to just do this as a key and then key this out. It was, I don't know what I was thinking because I didn't think Final Cut could read a translucent or a transparent background. But when it imports Photoshop files, it does. It if you have it erased, then it's going to import them with an invisible background, which is cool. So I saved each one of these as a Photoshop file, and I only had this visible layer. And then in Final Cut, there's your image, and it's black on this screen, but it's actually see-through, which is really cool. 
So if that makes sense. So it's kind of neat. You can see them here lined up. There's my lot rig one, link rig two. And those are all just individual Photoshop files. And what's neat about this, if I double click on this, this is really cool. It actually shows you your layers. So even as I kind of over, I, I've never done this before. I've done this a lot with Adobe, but I've never done it in Final Cut. And so this is really neat. If I wanted to, I could import that. I could duplicate that and you could go in and just turn on and off these other layers and actually instead of saving a bunch of Photoshop files, you could just have one Photoshop file with a bunch of layers and just go into it and turn on and off the different layers that you wanted to have on and off, which is pretty cool. Anyways, I wanted to show you that. That is using the tutorial similar to the wiggly effect and I use a phone in that tutorial. You can check that out in the link in the description below. But I also just wanted to show you that it is possible to do in Photoshop. You basically, if I didn't show you already, let me bring it up here. The very base level, I just traced it. This is just a trace, and I moved it. I recentered it afterwards, but I just went through with a pen tool that I liked and drew it, and then I made it translucent like this. Let me bring it up here so I can show you. So once I drew it once, then... I drew it again, but using the background one as my template. So that way the lines wouldn't be that far off. And then I did it again. <laughs> and so I have three and you can get crazy with this. If you really wanted to be advanced, you could go four, but you really don't need to. You can see what the effect looks like. It's a really cool effect. This, I would recommend at least three. I did two for the, the, the string and you can see it, it's repetitious, but I think that looks much better. Even if you're only going to do two, it has such a better effect than if you were just going to do like a wiggle video effect. It just it looks generic and it really doesn't take that much time. Moving on. So I did this cool little cable cam and I really didn't go in depth, even though it's a long video. I didn't go in depth about the stress I had about running this thing with my phone falling off of it. That's why I was primarily just doing the, the experiments over grass because I didn't want the phone to fall off. You mount your phone on a fishing line and hang it 10 feet in the air and you tell me if it stresses you out. Okay, anyways, I wanted to show you this other effect I did, which is something that would m probably most people would just do in a motion or in After Effects. And it's my nephew taken off. And this is really cool. And the reason I wanted to share this, I'm relatively new to Final Cut Pro and I've been using it for the last, I guess, two years now. And this last year I've been really just using it more and I've been trying to learn it. It's got a lot of things that are just different Things that work really well, they're just different, and it's hard to get used to a lot of the shortcut keys. But I'm learning how to optimize and use compound clips. I think it's the key to success in this program. I think I'm going to start incorporating compound clips with my titles as well. It's just so much easier. You can see how much cleaner. I mean, this timeline, this is really a clean timeline. Not that it really matters. No one really sees it except me, but I like for just working through it. It's nice. So I double-click on this compound clip, and you can see my layers here. And so what I have here is, you could probably imagine a couple effects here. I got the fire effect, green screened. I got some smoke and I got my nephew that just takes off. Now, the reason I even thought to do this, the clip I had for him, for whatever reason, when I was videotaping, I cut the camera and I think he was trying to pop a little wheelie, but I, I shut the camera off before he got it. So I had this one last frame in the video and I thought, wow, I think I could, because it's gonna shoot off the screen, I bet I could just animate it and if you look it's just a still photo and if you watch here you can see the grass in the background watch the grass in the background right there that's where I go into the still mode and I had to erase him off the photo and if you want to see that I guess we can go into it and take a look let's go into it so here it is this is the Photoshop file Oh, it looks like I didn't save the original well he obviously was down the corner and you can see here, I did a pretty good job. You can see some areas where I probably could have done a little better. I'm just using the patch tool over here. I like this tool, the, the spot healing. I like to just select areas and do it myself because I feel like I can do random little things. But I know there's content aware and some other options on the newer stuff now that you can do some cool stuff. But I'm used to using this. I like it. I just do like a random design like that. And that's how you kind of reposition it. It took a little while, but that was a pretty relatively easy Photoshop and you can see there I just cut that out and I saved it because I could use this for anything else I don't know what I'd use it for but he was down there like that we'll jump back and you can see 
and it happens for one second and that was like well once i noticed that when i did it i'm watching frame by frame so i'm like oh the grass in the background changes and that bothered me it's one frame like it's so hard to see that and so i'm like i know what i'll do i'll just add a sound effect and i'll add some smoke and some fire and then it's just like boom and he just takes off it's kind of cool though because even though it doesn't match up perfect it kind of looks like the thing just like clicks into gear so it's like it goes and then damn and this is a lot like what you would have set up in after effects but it's all within final cut i didn't have to bother taking it into motion or anything and i guess i could have maybe put a motion blur on that or something but i kind of liked how cheesy it was i wasn't trying to um, make anybody believe that he really took off and flame shot out of the tractor let's watch this with the sound on <laughs> and you can hear I used a drag car sound effect and that's I think the funny thing to it it just it drags on like you hear it still in the background even after I come back on screen but anyways I thought that was kind of neat but those were two little effects I wanted to show you I know a lot of this stuff maybe it is really simple maybe this is just the tutorial for you to kind of get into it but I don't know this is an old school way of dealing with uh, special effects is incorporating Photoshop files and Taking, making the opportunity with the layers because there's a lot of stuff you can do with layers and you can see here Final Cut recognizes it as a an image that's where it gives you this little symbol and I just think it's really neat it's kind of cool like just seeing that you can have certain things this is the grass layer but if I wanted I could bring on the tractor layer or take that away and bring on that and I'm sure that would mess up my actual edit let's see how that let's see how it, oh it's probably gonna wreck everything as it slowly updates, it'll start to cause problems. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. I know this is a sort of a long, quick video, but those are two effects that I wanted to share with you guys. And I have to somehow make sure I un edit undo what I just did. Okay. We're back to normal, I think. But as I learn Final Cut, I'd love to share more of this stuff with you guys. Let me know what editing software you're using. I'm really ready to jump into DaVinci now with these latest updates. I don't know if you guys are following all this editing software, but basically it's just DaVinci Resolve. I think that's the editing software to keep an eye on. It's currently available for free, and the stuff it does, it's amazing. There, and I'm going to do another video here where I talk about some of the things I would like to see. So if you have some things you would like to see in an editing software, leave those things in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Knob top. <laughs> Go make something.